As stakeholders are concerned that monies and materials donated by individuals and companies to the federal government and the state government towards the efficient containment of the coronavirus disease COVID-19 are not being appropriately accounted for. The Nigeria government approved 10 billion naira grant to fight the spread of the virus. Also, lots of monies have been donated to the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19. Unlike what is obtained in other climes, there are not being public disclosure on how those monies, especially those donated to the PTF, are spent. Several civil society organizations have kicked against the silence or non-accountability of the funds donated for managing COVID-19. For more on this, Terence Kwanum joins us now from Makurdi on this. And we're looking at this. It's quite, it's quite sad that we're seeing the level of corruption being highlighted in this COVID period. If I were to borrow the words of President Cyril Maposa from South Africa, he says it is the worst thing that can ever happen for someone to steal from people at this time where everyone is suffering collectively. Yes, I have said it time without no matter. Uh, the management and structure set by the federal government uh, to manage the COVID-19 was uh, in the first place with a lot of imbalance because it was not properly coordinated and there were a lot of leakages. And I think that was why uh, so many issues happened and, uh, and we had that impression uh, that uh, there's a lot of corruption going on. Uh, at the moment where I am that I'm making this program, is the, is the distribution of COVID-19 palliative uh, to the people of Benue State. Uh, we are right at the venue that I have to rush and, uh, and connect to this program. Uh, the, the, the programming in the first place was very poor. There were leakages, and then they couldn't even get to the people when the country was locked down uh, because, and they couldn't even manage the program they set to implement for the safety of Nigeria. Uh, so people who had access to government took what was meant for everybody. So like you say, uh, there, there's a lot of corruption involved in this. Uh, so even trying to correct it at the later stage is not being effective because people, one, have lost confidence in what the federal government is doing, and two, uh, uh, because uh, they were not sincere with what they were doing to the people of Nigeria. Uh, so their intentions were not met. Uh, concluding that it's corruption, there are a lot of investigations going on. So I don't want to draw the conclusion myself, but I am aware there are leakages in the entire program and setup of the COVID-19, right from the management of the health of our people and to the distribution of palliatives to our people. We had expected uh, that they would have followed suggestions people had given them to at least be able to reach Nigerians in their millions so that we can be able to cushion this, where some suggested that people that have been well with up to 10 to something million, and then some other persons uh, had uh, other uh, national ID cards and X, Y, Z. So those data would have been relied on better than they relying on uh, their political allies who rather diverted what was meant for the poorest of the poor for themselves. And at the end of the day, their investigations left, right, and center because nothing went to Nigerians up to the moment we are speaking. Mr. Kwanam, thank you for your initial analysis on this situation. Let's dig a bit deeper here. Now, Serap and some other organizations have come out with more facts for us that about 200 billion naira so far is what has come in from private individuals and corporations to contribute to COVID-19 in Nigeria. Now, we are told that that money is being stored in the Central Bank of Nigeria, and we are told that the person in charge of that money is the Accountant General of the Federation. Why is there no documentation to show the monies that have been spent and what has been raised in this regard to those that are said to be holding this money? Yes, the, uh, my organization itself has come out with large sums of monies that were not utilized for the purpose of Nigerians that people donated to this COVID. But like I told you, I don't want to draw conclusions on my report because when judicial commissions are set to investigate certain activities of Nigerians, 
We need to be patient with them. Uh, but the private organizations that made this donation has come up with an organization, I think Cockit or something. They have said that the monies they have donated, they are going to monitor how they are being used and they are going to go around Nigeria and then com uh, and then commission the, the distribution of the items they donated and the monies they used for what they used it to buy themselves. So we want to see how they are going to carry out that program, we are going to monitor it in detail and see if truly what they are going around the country to distribute is, uh, uh, is uh, corresponding with what we anticipated is in the coffers of government. We are all aware that during the lockdown, so many buildings that have our monies were burned down, but we don't want to go to that yet. We want to wait. The report is going to come out, and we are also going to bring out our reports, and we're going to engage everybody that is involved in public domain. All right, Terrence, let me draw your attention to a statement being made by the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and Social Development. She has said that at no point did she say that every Nigerian got palliatives. What's your statement about how the government, the federal government, what's your probably what's your scorecard in how the federal government handled social interventions in the course of this COVID-19 era and especially during the lockdown? Do you think they did enough or do you think more still needs to be no, done? I, and also talk to on this particular statement. What do you think is really going on here? One minute they said the minister said every Nigerian got palliatives. The other minute the minister is saying that she didn't say that at any given point in time. Yeah, first, my assessment is low. Uh, uh, they, they, act, they really fail Nigerians. And uh, mo at, at the point, you don't actually know who is actually telling you the truth because the Honorable Minister is coming out with a statement, is countering it itself. The, 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 the COVID 19 committee chairman is also bringing out his own figures and countering it itself. So, as a, on the whole, we know that something is wrong. But as Nigerians, we are always patient with them. They, they have told us they are going to bring out a report that is, uh, that is investigating uh, what happened during that time. All the buildings that are bought down, we are going to get all the report and we are going to engage them in public domain and we'll know where the money is meant for the poorest or the poor in our societies went and nobody is going to go scot-free as long as we are concerned on this because we know what Nigerians are going through and we are going to stand and defend Nigerians. Thank you for that, Mr. Kwanam. Now, with all of this money that we are yet to account for, let's not forget that some large global institutions have also contributed and given us loans for our fight against COVID-19. Namely, we have the $3.4 billion package that we did receive, emergency COVID-19 package that we did receive from the IMF. And we are also being told, it has been reported, that another $90 million is being drawn from the World Bank. I mean, how do you react to this? Who is going to pay this all back? Organizations like Transparency International have come out to ask that no more money is loaned to the government. Yes. Well, first, we need to appreciate the people that felt concerns for uh, vulnerable Nigerians that were locked down without anything uh, to fall onto. Uh, that they made those donations to our people. First, we appreciate them. Uh, we have confronted government about this, uh, of these monies also. What they have told us was that they are going to put some of these monies to loans that they are going to give Nigeria. They say palliative loans and next Y Z that people are applying. And so we want to monitor uh, with the banks that are involved and, uh, and uh, the people that uh, have applied, we are going to monitor to see if truly, because we know the amount of every money that have come in. That is the first, the, the fundamental thing. We know the amount of monies that have come in. We know the programs that they have claimed that they are, put, they are, they are going to channel the monies through. We know uh, uh, the palliatives, as in food items also, they've claimed they have bought it. We are, 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 are farm intensives and X, Y, Z. We are going to put all this together and then uh, quantify it and then put it uh, in correlation with what we have on our papers. And I, it is at that time that we can be able to draw conclusions because our fellow Nigerians are also applying for loans. Our fellow Nigerians are also going out that they are going to give them palliative. So you can just sit now and draw conclusions totally that this never got to who and, and X, Y, Z. Until they run up all this and the reports are on ground and then we bring what we have that 
We know this came in. This is what you have claimed you have done. And the Nigerians also will be there to testify whether if truly what they are saying is true. All right, Sharon. So what do you make out of the 774,000 jobs that is still locked in maybe administrative or political bottlenecks at the moment, whereby Nigerians by now should be benefiting from that, no matter how small the package was, but we knew that several Nigerians should have benefited. But right now, it is still locked down on who should be in charge of such programs in recruitment. What do you have to say to that and to Nigerians who should have been benefited from that particular program right now? Fundamentally, that is another direction that they are trying to do because uh, the National Director of Employment were the ones that were giving approvals for this. But in the first instance, how will you take such an amount of money and want to spend on Nigerians for three months? When there are so many things, why don't they divert certain monies to cottage industries? You want to pay people 20, 20,000. Uh, 774 that is 60,000 by 774 in 90 days when these are monies that cottage industries can be created and people will have long-term jobs. And so in the, the whole concept of the idea, one, I don't agree with it. And uh, fighting with it has only exposed that. They have also made that money to divert because I don't see anything good in, in spending such a huge amount of money in 90 days when we have a lot of cottage industries that would, would have created and then more Nigeria would have got long-term jobs uh, than, uh, than those kind of spendings. Mr. Terence Kwanu, many thanks for joining us today on Newsday and sharing your views with regards to this very worrying situation <laughs> that we're seeing.